And so what the devil's going to do is he's going to steal, he's going to lie, but ultimately he's going to deceive you into thinking that the battle is still not won. And one of the reasons why we are not victorious on overcoming things in the physical realm, physical things that are dealing with us here is because we are fighting the battle in a physical realm when the actual source of the problem is in a spiritual realm. Right? Does that make sense? Today. All right. I don't know if you guys have ever studied this or, or looked at this. We're going to be talking about something I call spiritual battle. Spiritual battle. Now, you're probably aware of the battle. Right? And you say, I know there's a spiritual battle. How do I know there's a spiritual battle? Well, because you look down and you're bleeding. Right? You say, well, why am I bleeding? Right? Why am I in turmoil? Why am I in so much pain? Why, 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 why is all this happening? It, it, it's easy to understand that, there, that there's some type of battle going on. And then you look around and you say, well, physically, I don't, I don't see what, what's causing all this. Um, we're going to talk about that over the next uh, about four or five weeks what I'm calling spiritual battle. And I've been kind of honing this a little bit. Uh, and I've had a little bit of time to, to think through this. Uh, how, any of you into art? Big art people? We've got some artists that are in the church. And uh, there, there was a painting that was in the Louvre uh, until about 1999. That painting was called, uh, well, it's it commonly known as Checkmate. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Uh, can we put it up there? That, that's the painting. And, and it it's a, it's a cool painting. I like to go to art museum, and sometimes I'll go to an art museum, I'll find something that I like, and I'll just camp out, right? And I'll just sit there, and I'll look at this painting, and I'm looking at little dots, and I'm looking at all the, and I'm trying to, I'm looking at the faces on, on different people, like, and I look at this one, I look at the face, and you may not recognize it, but, but the guy on the left, this is old school, the devil didn't always used to be red, right? You thought the devil was always red. The devil's not always been red. Back in the olden days here, the devil was green, right? The guy on the left is the devil. He's got the red He's got the red feather, and uh, that's supposed to be the devil, and the devil's looking, and he's playing chess with a young man for his soul. You like that? That's, that's the nature of, that's the nature of our, our, our world, right? We're, we're, we're in this battle for our soul, right? There's a battle for our soul. And, and this painting is interesting because it's called Checkmate because you can see the devil's not really all that concerned at all. The guy over here on the, on the right, the young man, he is in trouble. Um, the painting, they call it Checkmate because he's in Checkmate, right? He's, it, it, the game is over, and, and you can look, and you can see the angel. The angel's looking like, oh, this is not good. This is not going to be a good, a good, a good result. And, and so it was interesting. This painting was in the Louvre until 1999, and then it was sold by Christie's, and now it's in private hands. I don't know who owns it. Um, but before that, there was a chess champion. The guy's name, uh, the guy's name was Morphe. Uh, Paul Morphy, and he was a famous chess guy, and he used to travel around the world to different championships. One of those chess things took him through Paris, and he ended up at the Louvre with one of his buddies, and they're cruising through there, and he sees this one, right? Because he's a chess master, he, he, he camps out in front of this one. He starts to look at it, and his friend is there for about three minutes, and, and they look at it, and he's like, all right, that's good, all right, checkmate, shh, shh, cruise on. But Morphy sits there, and he just looks at it, and he just hones in on it for five minutes, ten minutes, a half hour. 45 minutes and he can't move he's captivated by this this checkmate because because the game's over right the game's over what's he and so finally he calls a curator from the city says can can you can you pull out a chessboard do you have a chessboard anywhere here they said well we're a museum we don't really deal with chessboards but they were able to find a chessboard and, and morphe got out and he put the, all the pieces out together and out of nowhere he says it's not over it's not over. The king has one more move. The king has one more move. Call the painter. The painter says it's over. The painter's wrong. The guy who created this, he's wrong. There's one more move. The king has one move left, friends. He has one move left. And what we find is that we are in a battle. It's a battle that you and I had nothing to do with starting. We had nothing to do with starting this battle. We weren't even around when this battle started. If you come back next week, I'll talk to you about the origin of the battle, how the battle started from Scripture. But you are in a battle. It's happening in heavenly places. It's happening in, in spiritual places. But the results of those, that spiritual battle, happens and affects you and I in the physical realm. I don't know if you know this, but there are actually what is called angels and demons. 
They actually exist. They exist in what's called heavenly places, or the NIV usually refers to it as heavenly realms. Okay? And so we look at this battle and how this battle started, and it starts out with God first making the first move. If you look at the chess thing, he makes the first move. And what does he do? He creates angels, including an angel by the name of Lucifer, the morning star. He creates him. That's the first move God makes, right? It's a pretty good move, right? Move the pawn out. I'll create angels. But the devil makes a strange move. Sometimes in chess, you'll make a strange move. You're like, what kind of move was that? The devil makes a strange move. He responds in pride and rebellion. We'll see this next week as we, as we, as we dive into it a little deeper. He re responds in pride and rebellion against God, and he takes a third of the angels with him in rebellion against God. And so one third of these, these angels that were made good end up rebelling against God. That's the second move. The second move in what becomes a battle, a spiritual battle between good and evil, between God and his own creation. So it's God's move, and so he creates a, a lesser being called man in his own image. It's, it's, he creates, it's in his own image, but it's a, it's a little bit lower than the angels. It's not, it doesn't have the same kind of power, but it's a lesser being, but it still has free will. And that's the next move that God makes. You say, that's a weird move. But he's making this move in the presence of all kinds of principalities and powers that are enthroned in heavenly places. He's making all these moves. All these moves are happening with vision upon them from all of, the, all of the angels. All the angels are watching all this happen. And so God makes this peculiar move. He creates people. He creates man. And when he does that, he takes man and he puts them in the location where he has thrown the devil. <laughs> he had taken the devil and when, he had, when he had, uh, the devil had rebelled, he took Satan and he cast him down to earth, right? And so now the earth is without form and void. It's just kind of a nothingness, right? It's not, and so God makes his next move. What he does, he cleans it up. He shines it a little bit. He makes it into a beautiful garden. And he says, I'm going to put this lesser being in your house. And he puts him in that little place. He says, let's see what happens. Let's see what this lesser being does. Angels watch. Angels watch. This is a spiritual battle. And he creates this thing and Satan's move. So Satan... He entices Adam and Eve to sin in order to get them to turn over the earth to him. It had been given, and, and, and that's what happens is they sin. And, they, and, and he, he gains control over the earth. And so God, it's his turn, looks at the pieces, looks at the board. What does he do? He creates a redemptive covering to Adam and Eve to, so they can have fellowship with him again. So Satan then comes back. He entices Cain and Abel to eliminate the godly redemptive line. God then responds to the birth of Seth, making a, making a way for men to call on the name of the Lord again. Satan then will respond with the Tower of Babel. God will then say, well, I'm going to rise up a whole nation. So he rises up a guy in the name of Abraham to be a nation apart. Satan then is going to trap that nation in Egypt. Under bondage, God's going to then rise up a guy named Moses in order to, it's this battle that goes on and on and on, and it's move and counter move and counter move, and you're watching this whole thing, and the angels are watching. They're watching. What are they watching for? They're watching to see if what God can do with this lesser being when it's dependent upon God. Not like these, not like these demons that rejected God. What's this lesser being going to, how is God going to pull this off with even a lesser being than us? And all of a sudden, if you look on the chessboard, there's a piece that you ain't ever seen before. It's not a rook, it's not a pawn, not a queen, not a bishop. Nobody ever seen a piece like this before. Jesus is this new piece that shows up on the board. Never seen it before. And the devil works out his final checkmate at the, when, we get, when we get into the New Testament, his final checkmate. He gets all the leaders around and, 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 and all the religious people as well. And, and, and they get Jesus and they go, we got you in checkmate now. We got you in checkmate now. Hang him on a cross. And they hang him on a cross and he hangs there. Checkmate. Checkmate. 
God's redemptive line, what he's done throughout history, all those thousands of years, it's all dead just like that with the, with the palpitating heartbeat of Jesus Christ silenced. Checkmate. Day one, day two, Saturday comes. The king has one more move. I thought it was checkmate. No, 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 no. no, no. See, the king, king always has one more move. The king has one more move, right? The resurrection. Jesus is raised from the dead, and it all starts over again. And we talk about spiritual battle. And when we talk about it, I want you to understand, when we talk about spiritual battle, we are talking about battle that we are not having to fight because we are trying to win it. It is a battle that has already been won, okay? So when we talk about spiritual warfare, when we talk about spiritual battle over the next several weeks, I don't want you to be thinking, all right, let's come up with some strategies for how we can win the battle. That's dumb. You don't have to win the battle because the battle was already won. Checkmate happened, and there was one more move, and Jesus was resurrected. It's already been won on the cross from the grave. You say, well, Dustin, if it's already been won, hmm, if it's already been won, then why are we still fighting? <laughs> why are we still fighting? What, what battle are we in? Here's the thing. Though the determining... Uh, Though the battle's been won, the devil is still fighting, and he's still raging. He's still trying to bring down as many with him. Satan no longer, because of the resurrection, Satan no longer has any authority over you and I to defeat you. Okay? But here's what he does. He only means to overcome you by doing what he, the only thing he knows how to do, which is steal and lie and deceive. And so what the devil's going to do is he's going to steal, he's going to lie, but ultimately he's going to deceive you into thinking that the battle is still not won. Right? That's what he's going to do. He's going to take the whole lifetime of you trying to convince you that you still are in a battle and that you still, you still, there's still, you can still lose. That somehow God is not, was not victorious. That's not the case at all. So spiritual warfare is this. Let me, let me just define the spiritual battle for us. And I'm not going to take forever here. But the spiritual battle is a cosmic battle that is fought in the invisible realm. Okay? And this isn't fantasy. This is reality. Okay? This is reality. Right now, in our presence, there are angels and there are demons. All right? In heavenly realms. Okay? And the spiritual warfare is a cosmic battle that's fought in the invisible spiritual realm, but its effects are fleshed out, its effects are lived out and felt here in the physical realm. That makes sense? Okay, let me say that again. Spiritual warfare is the cosmic battle fought in the invisible realm. Okay? The spiritual realm that has its effects played out and felt and experienced here in the, vi the visible physical realm. Okay. Now, many things we consider to be natural occurrences, uh, we say, well, I have this trouble that's going on in my life, and we just figure it's just all natural. We just assume that, that everything that happens in our, in, that's bad or good that happens in our life, it's just natural things that are happening physically within our physical realm. We just assume that. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, just naturally, the chemicals in my body are causing me to rage and to feel feel deep addiction and deep desire and, and and it's all just physical within me not so not so i'm not saying that there aren't some things that aren't physical right i'm not saying that there aren't some things and, and many things even that, that aren't physical in nature right a lot of things are physical in nature but what i'm saying is that ultimately behind all that there is a spiritual realm that is having a serious effect on us and causing certain things to happen and one of the reasons why we are not victorious on overcoming things in the physical realm physical things that are dealing with us here is because we are fighting the battle in a physical realm when the actual source of the problem is in a spiritual realm right does that make sense you're fighting a battle that is primarily spiritual and you're fighting it in the physical realm, which isn't even where the battle is. You're in the wrong room. Right? Does that make sense? The devil wants to keep you from dealing in the spiritual realm. He wants to convince you that everything is just physical. Because if he can keep you out of the spiritual realm, if he can keep you from being on your knees, 
If he can keep you from, from, uh, from spending time in God's word, if he can keep you from, from focusing and looking at things from a spiritual perspective, he can keep you from doing that, then he's got you because now you're going to be fighting the battle. You know, you're fighting Gettysburg in Detroit, right? You're not even in the right location. So let me, let, me, let me go into scripture. Let's look at Ephesians. You got Ephesians chapter 6. Let's look at this. And we're going to spend a little time in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, uh, verse 10 to 12. Here's what it says. And my son is running PowerPoint today. And uh, is he doing a good job? I thought he did a good job. I think on the slides for the music, everybody, you see the music? All right, buddy. I love it. I love it. Let's, uh, let's do this. It says, finally, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. See, here's the deal. The devil's, he's running schemes. Anybody ever run a scheme? Say, I got to run in a scheme. <laughs> Just the whole word scheme. You know it's not good when, oh, well, you know, my, my, my mom comes in and says, hey, what kind of schemes you running? Right? She, you know it's not good. You know, it's like, well, I was getting ready to go to church. Well, mother, uh, no, you're running schemes, right? It says, it says, put on the full armor of God, right? Not just part of it. You better put the whole thing on so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You're going to have to stand up. It, it's not going to be easy. This isn't something that you're going to be able to do sitting in your easy chair. This isn't going to be something you're going to be able to do lying down. You don't have to take a stand for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. What is flesh and blood? Physical. Our struggle, your struggle, my struggle, is not primarily against flesh and blood, it says, but against the rulers, right? Against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Some, verses, uh, some versions say heavenly places, but it's heavenly realms, okay? And so what are we talking about? Rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world. We're talking about demonic forces. We're talking about those that are spiritual angels who have rejected God, and now they are fighting and they are battling back and forth. I, you know, I was thinking about this. When, when they're battling, they don't die, right? So like when we're in a fight, I was just thinking about this just, just the other day. When, when we're in a fight, you know, and you, you have like World War III or World War, World, the Civil War or something, you'd shoot somebody and then the other person would die. This is kind of a weird battle. Because you've got eternal beings that are fighting in there and, and they've got power and they're fighting against each other. But it says that our battle is not against, against it's not a, primarily about flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers that are enthroned in heavenly places. Look at, look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. As you go there, just, just recognize this, that where is the battle being held? Heavenly places, heavenly realms. Right. Location of the battle, heavenly realms. All right. Verse 3, chapter 1, verse 3, Ephesians. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So here we've got the word heavenly realms again. Now what's in heavenly realms here? Praise be the God and Father who has blessed us in the heavenly realms. What's in the heavenly realms? The battle and also my blessings. My blessings are in heavenly realms. Every spiritual blessing in Christ. So all of my blessings are right now, currently, while I'm here in the physical, in the flesh, also in my, my blessings are in spiritual places, heavenly places, along with the battle which is happening. So the battle is happening where my, where my blessing is, right? Yes. Ephesians chapter 1, let's go down to verse 18. It says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance to his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand, at his right hand in the Heaven. heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one, he, one to come. So, what, what's in heavenly realms? First of all, the battle's happening in heavenly realms. My blessing is in heavenly realms. Who else is in heavenly realms? Jesus. Jesus is in heavenly realms. 
spiritual dimension. There is a spiritual dimension that all these things are in. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. Just flip over the page there. It says, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. You should rejoice for that. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So, what do we got? We got the battles happening in heavenly realms. My blessing is up in heavenly realms. Jesus is in heavenly realms. And guess who else is there? We are. We are seated right now, though we were in the physical realm, we are in a sense also right now in the spiritual realm. Because that's where the battle is. Wow. Let's keep going because now things start to snowball. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8 to 11. It goes on, says, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery. This mystery. Look at what it's saying. It's saying, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ. What, what's this talking about? This is, this, is, this is Paul. And Paul is saying that he was given this message to preach to the Gentiles about the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of a mystery. He's going to make a mystery plain to somebody. Yeah, yeah. Who's he making this mystery plain to? Which for ages past was kept hidden in God. See, it was a mystery before. It was hidden. Nobody knew what it was. Who created all things. That's God. His intent was that now, through the church. Okay, so now the church is involved in somehow revealing some kind of mystery that's always been hidden for a long, long time. Amen. It says, his intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the who? Rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Follow me with this, okay? Follow me with this. I'm going to close with this, all right? And then we'll come back and we'll look at the origin of the battle next time. Here's the thing. There is a spiritual battle that is raging. You and I were not a part of its start. We had nothing to do with it. We are pawns in this thing, right? We, we came in after the battle was all started, right? But somehow, we keep going back to this is happening in the spiritual realms, spiritual places, and there, is, there are authorities, there are angels, there are demons, and they are all watching, they are watching intently. There's a mystery. There's this mystery. What is God doing? Why did God create these humans? Why did God do this? Can God really undo the mistakes that these people made? Can, can, what is this revealing to us about God? There's all this mystery that's happened. And through the church, okay, it's through the church and the way the church lives and the way that the church functions that it is testifying to angels and demons as to the character and to the wisdom of God. Yes, Lord. You see that? Yes. Do you see that? Yes. This grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now we're going to fight this battle. We are in a battle if we are the true church. If we are the true church, we're living as the church, then we're involved in the fight. Okay? We're involved in the fight. That means that there will be bleeding right? That means there will be victory. But it also means that we have faith knowing that the battle is a one battle, yes. right? And we need to keep from allowing the devil to deceive us into thinking that somehow this isn't a done deal, into thinking it's checkmate. We need to continue to come back to his word and to counterbalance the word of the devil that is, oh, well, I'm going to defeat you here. I can defeat you there. I'm going to defeat you there. The battle's not over. I can still overcome God. That, that's over. We can come back to Scripture and we can constantly be reminded, no, the battle is over. And, and, and you got, there's nothing you can say about it. There's nothing you can do about it. It's over. Amen. 
he's still going to try to wreak havoc. He's not going to go down without a fight. It's still going to be painful. So what do you do? You fight this battle where the battle is located. Which is where? On On your knees. In heavenly places. Heavenly realms. Okay. Next week... I hope you come back. I know you got to run around, but next week we're going to be talking about uh, about the origin of the battle, okay? And we're going to talk about how this battle started and why it started, okay? And we're going to go from there and see how that affects us and how we're pawns in this whole thing, all right? All right, so let's pray, and I thank you for coming this morning. Uh, before you guys here in the front head out, we'll give the folks in the back a chance to scooch out if they want to. And, uh, and uh, if anybody's got any questions or anything, feel free to come up and, and uh, cause I, it'll take me five or 10 minutes to get off the stage. So <laughs> you've got plenty of time to get me before I, God, I thank you for uh, your goodness to us, God. And, and we know that we are in a battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's a battle that's being waged all around us. It's, it's a battle that's, if you took all the wars, the civil war and uh, World War I and World War II and Korea and all the battles of the world, God, it, those are nothing compared to this one in scope. God, and we're in the middle of this thing. God, and we would, uh, a lot of people just ignore it and think if I ignore it, right, or if I, if I don't cause any trouble, then I won't be a casualty. God, we're going to cause some trouble. God, we're going to cause some trouble because we're, we've picked a side. God, we're on your side. God, you're our Redeemer. You're our Lord. God, we surrender to you. God, we're a part of your, your kingdom. We're a part of your, your, uh, your army. God, we pray that you would just uh, protect your people, protect your army. God, help us to understand clearly what those things are in our individual lives now as we go from here. God, that we would be able to identify, whoa, that's spiritual. Oh, this is a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual battle. Oh, I thought this was just physical. No, this is spiritual. God, I pray that you would, you'd open up our eyes to the spiritual realm. And God, draw us to our knees to engage in the spiritual battle. In Jesus' name, amen.
here for me And I've heard they are silken And can carry me of mercy was God for me Oh, this love that burns me Deeper than the sea And the treasure I find here The Savior's love Okay.